the International Conference on Agriculture and Forestry. Yeah, I am Romeo Clemente of the Cagayan State University. Um, I'm a professor there, and uh, I'm from the Philippines. I came all the way down from the Philippines uh, just to present this uh, study entitled Produce Position Factors of Students' Choice in Agriculture, Fisheries, and Natural Resources Courses, uh, Luzon Area. There are three areas in the Philippines, but uh, it's just the first one that uh, I present to you because this is a nationwide research funded by the Department of Agriculture, uh, Agricultural Training Institute, and also funded by the Central Office of the Commission on Higher Education. So, um, to give you a, a brief background, uh, you know, I was challenged and uh, also um, inspired to conduct this study because of some realities in the Philippines. And it's worthy enough to, for me to share you uh, that in the Philippines, uh, FNR uh, enrollment has declined by almost 50% in just 10 year period from the academic year 1999 to the academic uh, to, to 2000 and uh, 2010 to 2011. Another reality is that Philippines is an agricultural country whose uh, average age of Filipino farmers is 54. Just imagine to do this. Um, they're about going, <laughs> they're about to you know, transfer their destiny, <laughs> uh, but no one else uh, can assure of uh, uh, the destiny of our country for this, and that's why I conducted this study. And 75% of the 92 million Filipinos live in the countryside, and they depend on farming, fishing, and wood and lumber production as sources of livelihood. So I just thought to myself that uh, this scenario affects the food production and environmental stewardship. So my study was anchored on uh, to establish uh, frameworks of policy-driven interventions designed to inspire interest in improving the quality and relevance of AFNR courses through the support of authorities in addressing the financial technical limitations as well as moral requirements of agriculture, fisheries, uh, and forestry human resources development. And I found this study very significant because it provides baseline data and information useful to technical, vocational, uh, and comprehensive private and state colleges and universities, as well as lead uh, government agencies that are responsible to collaboratively perform mandated functions to push the Philippine government's goal to improve subscription of Filipino students to skills-based AFNR courses. So necessarily, and in general, I adopted this methodology. Uh, this is a survey, and I made a survey on students' motivational uh, and personality as intrinsic factors, no? and I uh, accompanied that with extrinsic factors. I also conducted um, FGD, a focus group discussion, together with interview with the faculty members, program chairs, deans, research directors, vice presidents for academic affairs, uh, and officials of the Agricultural Colleges Association of the Philippines. This is a somewhat um, a private organization uh, because this is just composed of uh, the professors of the different universities. But uh, the ACAP, the, the Agricultural Colleges Association of the Philippines, help the Commission on Higher Education. Also, I made an actual visit no, to, uh, 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 of the, in, the instructional facilities, equipment, and laboratory farms. So specifically, I gathered this data, a survey on AFNR students' personal uh, profiles, motivation, as I mentioned a while back, and personality factors, together with extrinsic influences, uh, but along with it, I also tried to balance it with difficulties. I made a survey on the difficulties experienced uh, by students while they are enrolled in the said course or courses. And uh, to validate further, I tried to elicit information through the FGD, an interview uh, which, uh, which gave me the chance and opportunity to elicit uh, issues, uh, concerns, and problems along reasons of increase or decrease of enrollment, increase and decrease too of the board examination performance. Uh, also, I delved my attention to knowing something about the scholarship grants and financial assistance. 
the qualification of teaching staff, the compliance to Commission on Higher Education Policies and Standards, because the CHED is the one that is controlling the tertiary level. Uh, the DepEd Department of Education is for the... Uh, we know in the Philippines, there are, uh, we have a trifocalization of education. There's one agency that holds the, te the skills, one for tertiary, one for basic. And then I also tried to make some kind of uh, elicitation of information on the interventions uh, to, the, to the institutional AFNR-related problems. So here are the documentations, uh, just a proof that uh, I conducted uh, some kind of interview and uh, with the university presidents, uh, vice presidents, and uh, uni other university officials. This is the uh, vice president at the, the, the center, vice president for the, uh, the ACA. Um, and uh, also, these are the documentations for my interview and uh, focus group discussion. While this one, I visited the laboratory farms, and uh, you, must, you might notice how these things are structured. Um, they can explain something about how uh, and what these um, laboratory farms are. And uh, I made a picture uh, showing the agricultural uh, production. You know, there is one part in northern uh, Philippines uh, that is uh, usually or frequently visited by typhoon. And so root crops um, are, uh, one are the ones being, you know, produced there. And uh, the main crops in the Philippines are corn and rice. And uh, here we are in process of developing the, what do you call this one? The... Um, what do you call this? Uh, this plant? <laughs> yeah, dragon fruit. Okay. Uh, of course, this uh, may I just show you the fishing uh, farms. Uh, this is a um, laboratory farm inside the building, but there are also laboratory uh, farms or laboratory facilities which are not within. And uh, here are some of the pictures. Okay. Uh, this is in the northern part of the Philippines. This is very far from the mainland. Uh, here are the uh, shots uh, of the trees, but these are inside the uh, universities and colleges. Okay, for the study areas and coverage, and in Luzon alone, um, there are 33 higher education institutions, uh, 32 uh, uh, state universities and one private. Supposed to be two, but the one that applied, which application was approved, uh, did not have enrollment, and so that school uh, get back, petitioned back the application, so the CHED uh, abolished um, the, the application. And um, I gathered the pieces of information and the data of the survey from the eight uh, regions of Luzon. Uh, on these higher, 33 uh, higher education institutions, there are five uh, centers of development involved that I visited and uh, wrote the questionnaires and four are centers of uh, excellence. And here is the map of Luzon. This is just a part of the Philippines because we have Visayas and we still have Mindanao. And I'm just showing you here the, situ the, the locations of the universities that is spread throughout the Luzon area. And it is these I visited. Uh, I guess um, some of us here already visited Philippines and um, some of you visited Palawan and so on and so forth. Um, so, for the findings, majority of students, dominantly females, are delayed for more or less two years prior to enrollment in college with only 20% who wanted the course they enrolled. So, that must be something, no? It's not their personal volition and they were not fully convinced to enroll such a uh, course. Uh, you will come to know the factors afterwards. Then two-thirds of the respondents' uh, parents live in rural areas and 70.44% finish only some years in basic education. Only few reach the tertiary and only few graduated actually or completed the college education. Uh, their fathers, 61.45%, are engaged into FNR-related occupations, while their mothers, 90.49%, are mere housekeepers who heavily influence uh, children's disposition. So mothers there uh, play a um, gigantic role or very pretty role to the decision making of some or the disposition or predispositions of uh, the students. And the professional parents, 
Uh, 16, inclusive of the FNR graduates, poorly influence their children to take up FNR courses. This is now what's happening in the country, in my country, in the Philippines. That um, those who are now into FNR, those who are now already in the agriculture, fisheries, and uh, natural resources, are the ones who discourage their children to take up uh, AFNR courses. And uh, that's something that uh, my government has to look into because the interventions must be made. And uh, so on the predisposition area, uh, as, per, as per survey and as per standardized um, questionnaire I used, it came out that the students are predisposed to take the course with their innately felt social responsibility to ensure food security, despite of the fact that only 20% of them like uh, AFNR. Uh, this must be something. And then expectation from the government to provide local employment. So they expect, they are, even if they are not completely convinced, no, they still expect my government to, you know, to give them the employment and how they wish that it's going to be in a short -term time, a waiting time for uh, them to have so. And then uh, chance to avail scholarship grants or discounted or features and fee because majority of our enrollees in the universities and colleges, they are from the rural areas and many of them are poor. Maybe uh, it's not new to you that uh, my countrymen, many of them are poor because of so many factors, maybe social reasons, political reasons, and maybe uh, economic reasons. And then uh, another thing, um, just a follow-up. Uh, or they enroll the course because they have the innate personality and domains to be investigative. So they have this tendency to socialize and be enterprising. This must be something that uh, we can call it advantage and edge. No? And then extrinsic expectation on high employment demand in the job market. Maybe students feel that even if there are a few of them, there will come a time they will be prioritized because of the low supply and demand. Okay, and then the other findings, uh, male uh, agriculture students are more extrinsically influenced in rural agriculture than females. That is in the agriculture, no? But in the field of fisheries, female fisheries students who are, uh, who are more artistic than males are more extrinsically predisposed to activities especially on value-added production. So uh, they have a line of thinking that if ever they enroll fisheries, how they wish they can be able to join in the organic production, food product, food processing. Among uh, three uh, programs, I noticed that it's always forestry that is always lagged behind. There are only few who would like to uh, take up forestry. And then uh, in my interview, uh, okay, sir. Uh, I found out that there is a dearth of qualified teaching staff in adequacy of modern facilities, equipment, as well as library holdings and inferior public notion. This is one thing no, that is so degrading sometimes for AFNR courses. And these are the students' predicaments in my country. Uh, low passing rate in AFNR board examinations due to low participation rate, expensive requirements of review, and generic contents of examination. And also, I was able to learn from my uh, interview of the consistency of their answers that most of the state universities and colleges feel obliged to expand curriculum offering to non-APNR courses to survive institutional fiscal constraints. Because this SUCs, originally they were mandated to offer and, you know, push straightforward AFNR. But how can that university, these universities can survive uh, if uh, they will not expand to non-AFN courses? So this, uh, there is no a dual attention of these SUCs in, in my country. Campaign for the FNR curriculum programs as effective strategy to improve uh, enrollment. This is the only way by which some of the state universities are now doing this so they can be able to improve their enrollment. And for my conclusion, the sustainable productivity in AFNR programs rests in the wide-ranging and harmonized implementation capacity of uh, policy-driven interventions to address the financial, technical limitations, as well as moral requirements of agriculture, fisheries, forestry human resources development. And for my recommendation, and I hope the government uh, through its Congress can be able to do something on this, uh, the creation of a free tuition fee policy for the regular enrollees of the third year and fourth year AFNR students, or the creation of a separate AFNR Student Scholarship Bureau of the Commission on Higher Education mandated by the Philippine government to centrally manage comprehensive scholarship financial assistance program. And these are the things now, no? 
uh, which uh, my government can uh, benefit from uh, to fine tune wider latitude and so on and so forth. And um, accreditation and uh, regulation of CHED in the community outreach programs of higher of HCIs to ensure a doable and encompassing mechanism, procedures, and processes that allow rural AFNR stakeholders, especially the local leaders, farmers, housekeepers, housekeeper mothers, and social workers. Uh, most of them are uh, mere housekeepers, and so they must be part of the production. Uh, they must be partners of development. Okay. And uh, another is compliance to a regular conduct of tracer study for FNR graduates and follow through career guidance orientation for second year. Why second year? Because this second year, sometimes they're uh, doubtful as to whether they will continue with the course or not. Uh, another is this on inclusion in the CHED institutional sustainability, sustainability assessment uh, under Hayes uh, Quality Assurance for the operation of a provincial AFNR learning resource center in the university campus, equipped with updated books, information dissemination flyers to motivate these students, of course, hard and soft copy of training kits, upgraded up, uh, ICT and internet access facilities, and state-of-the-art laboratory equipment. So uh, there must be more to be signed by some government agencies, which include Department of Environment and Natural Resources, Department of Science and Technology, local government units, Climate Change Commission, uh, Department of Agriculture, Agricultural Training Institute.